Good afternoon, and it is indeed Friday afternoon at the time of me doing this recording. Welcome to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark. This is normally my 28-minute slot, but Michael and I were chatting a bit today about uh, the joys of living in London, which I did for about five years, and uh, it certainly was an experience, very, very different from New Zealand, but... um, the good thing about living in New Zealand, and especially in the Wairarapa, is that you have a lot of open spaces. There's not the cathedrals and castles of Europe, but, you know, I heard someone say the other day, the bush are our cathedrals, and I guess they are, you know, especially if you ever get lucky enough to get up around Dargaville, see Tane Mahutu and stuff like that, you know, they great creatures like that are really truly moving and you know awesome places um not just places like cathedral cove and spirits bay but you know also the forests of the west coast of the south island you know there's so many beautiful places and if anything i think COVID-19, this pandemic that's ravaged the world has forced us in some ways to look around us and our country instead of thinking about jumping on the ditch and going to Queensland or or the Gold Coast or whatever. uh, Instead, you know, a lot of us are forced to holiday at home, maybe in a place that we've never been to, always wanted to go to. And I I think we're going through a transition where people are rediscovering New Zealand in many ways. Um, And I know that's an overused term and it sounds corny and stupid, rediscovering. You know, they haven't even really discovered it yet. There's so many nooks and crannies in this place. There's so much incredible history that we have. It's, It's an amazing history that's never really been told and... A lot of it is fraught with pain and anguish, especially for the indigenous people of this country, the Maori. Um, You know, they went through a terrible, terrible time during, um, you know, colonialisation and have never really been treated equally. And that kind of interferes with us learning about our past because we have to deal with a lot of pain and a lot of things a lot of people don't want to admit or face at this point of time. It's inevitable, it will happen, but I understand, you know, for a lot of people the feelings are very raw, but I must say it was um, very nice to um, see the government have the good sense to back down on these ridiculous ideas like wearing ties in Parliament and to say that somebody cannot wear something of far greater importance, far greater meaning and mana than just some stupid little bit of cloth around someone's neck. You know, sometimes I think the things that we argue over are so petty and ridiculous and it was nice to see them climb down and see sense and perhaps this is a, another piece of the beginning of our dialogue as to who and what we are as a people, you know. It's always a very fluid thing and during my lifetime I've noticed a lot more um, Asian people come into this country. Everybody's noticed it, and it's caused problems amongst us um, because mainly through ignorance more than anything else. Um, there isn't a person who comes to this country that doesn't want to make their life better and work hard to make that happen. Every single person who ever came this way, that's what they're determined to do. So... You know, we have to enable everybody, allow them to become the best citizens they could be. And hatred and prejudice towards anybody is uh, an erosive 
thing that helps no one. And, you know, my show is about mental health issues and as part of it, the prejudice against people, not not just racial prejudice, but prejudice against people who are considered to be mentally ill or unwell or mad, have lost some ability. Well, that's true to some degree, yes. Well, that doesn't mean you lose all ability. Um, you know, I always like to refer to one of my favourite people of the last century, Winston Churchill, who suffered terribly from depression, and I feel a great similarity with Winston. I know, you know, he drank a lot as I do, he didn't sleep, uh, and as a result he slept in very late in the morning and kept what they used to call gentleman's hours, didn't get out of bed till 10 in the morning sometimes and often with a hell of a hangover, but I love that story about Winston and, you know, it just shows the wit of the man. He was at a party and some woman said, you sir are drunk. And quick as a flash, Winston replied, Madam, I, I may very well be inebriated, but um, you are ugly and tomorrow morning I will be sober, but you, madam, you will still be ugly. And um, I guess it's a hell of a thing to say, but it shows that, you know, Winston was more than just an orator. He was a wit. He was a, a man who was clever and could think on his feet, who led his country through a time of war and galvanised the people. More than anything, that's what he did. And it just goes to show that someone who is absolutely wrapped with mental depression can still achieve great things. Yes, you do lose something, but it doesn't mean you lose everything. It doesn't mean that you necessarily lose the ability to achieve whatever you might want. It just means that you got a bit more of a setback than most. But hell's bells, there's people with no legs, you know, that make the, the greatest achievements you've ever seen go on to win gold medals and uh, are never defeated. I saw the story on the telly the other night about this poor woman who lost a good part of her arm and you know despite the pain she's learned to paddle a kayak and she's doing the coast to coast and you know I think isn't that amazing that someone can drive themselves so hard and make such a great achievement despite the odds despite the pain and it it really comes down to what's going on in your head and a lot of that is true of mental depression um it's very easy to say to somebody, snap out of it, but when you are in the depths of depression, it's very difficult to see any light. You get lost in negativity, and I have found that going out, um, spending more time with nature, I've found... M very cathartic and it enables me to think more positive thoughts whereas if I lock myself inside or I get busy with the things of a city I find they tend to drag me down the, the distractions and the things I don't like chip away at me and lead to frustration frustration to anger anger to negativity and it kind of um, snowballs. So I find getting away and trying to find a bit of peace and quiet works very well for my mental health and it gives me a greater appreciation of, of nature and wildlife. It is very lonely sometimes and sometimes you need distraction and noise and busyness but sometimes I find the peace and quiet is, is really quite healing. Well, we're kicking on in time, and, um, you know, I'm always sitting down at 2 and 3 in the morning, um, and I'm always writing bits and pieces scribbled on bits of paper, and I guess no one will ever really get to read them because I doubt that these sort of things will 
um, ever really make it into a book. Um, <laughs> uh, there's just too much stuff and not enough time, and ain't that life. But I wrote this at two o'clock this morning, I think, and it was about arguments because, you know, in my life, certainly, those who are left, and, and, and it's not many, most of them are dead now, but the few that are left tend to argue a hell of a lot. A lot of petty stuff, and I wrote, Arguments only result in pain. They solve nothing. They only achieve ill feeling and sometimes hatred, guilt, and often end in compromises, climb downs, and apologies. They erode rather than resolve, which is always its failed intention. That is to say, you intend to resolve something by arguing, but you don't. You don't. A lot of the time, it's best to walk away. Whatever it takes, turn your back and just walk away and have a breather, rather than losing your temper and lashing out. People who suffer from mental health, and, and remember, not everybody suffers the same. Some people have anger issues, and... If you nag and nag and nag at them, they just explode and start bashing people. And folks often get into this little game that they play where one winds up the other until they explode and it's almost like, you've hurt me so I'll get you back. And when you get into that kind of role-playing, it can often end disastrously. And sometimes it's up to you to sit back and think, well, surely there must be a better way of me resolving these things. In some cases for me, it's meant walking away. Walking away from people and purposely staying out of contact and just never seeing them again because they're just not good for me. They drag me down and I'm better off without them. As much as I might like them, it's just never worked out well for me. So... You've got to make those calls. And it's not easy. Everybody likes to have friends. Everybody likes to surround themselves with people who make the right noises. I always argue it's better to have a few good friends than a load of people who are nicey-nice to your face and, and busy stabbing you in the back when you're gone. So, yeah, I'm always about quality over quantity and... I'm very, very lucky in my life. I still have a few really, really decent friends and I find I always feel better when I spend time with them and I talk to them. And I think that's probably the best way of, of knowing who your best and truest friends are is that you both win when you're together. This is win-win and w without being too kissy-kissy about it, it's nice to have people that you can rely on and that you can trust. I really don't have many of those at all. In fact, I could count them on less than one hand. But those I do have, hell, there isn't anything they wouldn't do for me, and that's flattering. But it also cuts both ways. And, you know, most of the friends I still have I've had since I was a kid. So it just goes to show, you know, good people are always very, very hard to find. But those you do, I guess you should try and hang on to them. You don't always stick with them all your life. You know, sometimes those relationships fade away and then they spark up again. And it's a good thing when they do. But, you know, there's one or two that I'm thinking about when I say things like that. And, you know... Friends help you through your struggles, through your mental issues. Sometimes you've just got to lean on them a little bit and without dumping on them, just allow them to support you a little bit. Right, well, it's damn near me for another day. We've probably only got about, oh, crikey, maybe five minutes left. So I just wanted to... Uh, <laughs> Talk about another issue that might make you smile a little bit. 
and this is um, mostly about the fact that most of the violence committed in this country, the vast majority of it, is committed by males. And it is committed by men, mostly young, not always, but mostly by men who do have mental issues. If you are incredibly violent towards somebody, something is going wrong. Something is going radically wrong with you, and you do need help. And you do need to ask somebody, anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, but you need to have a damn good look in the mirror and say, I don't like this, I don't like what's happening, I don't really want to hurt those that I'm supposed to love. But what I want you to understand is this little bit here. Women are fooling themselves if they think they can change a man. They can badger him, shame him, punish him, but they cannot change him. No amount of shame, pain or punishment will change a man. Guilt will change him for a little while. Shame, punishment and fear. Well, of more will last longer. But sooner or later, he will revert to time. Nothing will change the man. Only the man can change the man. He has to want and need that change fully and completely. Only then can he experience real and permanent change for the better. And when I'm talking about, and I'm talking about me personally, you know, I have been a lot worse in the past than what I am now, let's just put it that way. You know, I've done a lot of regrettable things, especially when I was young. And I've met one or two good women in my life who tried to change me for the better. And they didn't. But what they did do is they made me reflect upon myself and that initiated the change in me where I stopped doing some of the things that had become to some degree habitual that I didn't think about that much. And when you don't think about things that much, then they can get away on you and get worse. Gambling, for example, lots of things, drug addictions, all that. And... Once you get into that moment of denial, I don't have a problem. <laughs> you know that you do. Um, that's the point where you've got to say, this has to stop now for good. And that's an awfully hard thing to do because you have to fight that battle every single day. It never really goes away. But it is doable. And, you know, it leads you to a better place mentally. And that's what, I'm all about and that's why I try and encourage people to do right well it's time for me to wrap up the show for another week I thank you for listening and I realize that it's uh, that I talk a lot I realize that and I talk almost non-stop what I hope that you appreciate is I only have 28 minutes in which to squeeze in a hell of a lot and I could say a hell of a lot more if I had a chance but uh, this is all the public year time that I'm allotted in my life and I'm very grateful for it because Arrow Radio Station allows me to do this gratis, right? It costs me not a bean. It costs them. They go out of their way to allow me to have a voice and that simply comes down to the kindness of Michael and Veronica here at, at Arrow Radio and... and also comes down to the fact that to some degree the sponsors New Zealand on the air and Tents Trust and all those good people who keep this place afloat um, you know they're, they're supporting us as well and Wire Rapper TV you know it's wonderful that they've come on board and now you know we're shooting across the tally as well on the internet on the airwaves it's there, but unfortunately not well known, and I really would appreciate if you could tell your friends about public radio, because 
it's far more interesting than the commercial stuff. You were only going to hear those old hits for a thousandth time, and a lot of it is just dalliance, you know, it's just distraction. Tap your feet, nod your head, thanks for coming, goodbye. Whereas to me, um, I find that stations like this are far more thought-provoking. They give you something to think about, People who wouldn't normally have a voice. I mean, there's no way that I would ever be on national TV saying what I say, but in public access radio stations like this, you know, not-for-profit organisation at that, they're not trying to make money out of you. They're trying to bring something to you that enriches your life, makes you think, broadens your horizons, is to some degree provocative, but most of all interesting and all about the community. Um, and to that end, I'd just like to say a big hi to everyone up in the Hawke's Bay. It's lovely to have you along now as part of our family and to all the good folks of the Wairapa all the way from Nawi right through. Um, unfortunately, um, we can't get it over in Pahia Tour, which, which is a damn shame, but we'd love to see um, us expand up that way, but certainly... Um, the people of Wairarapa and, and the Hawke's Bay are very privileged to, to get such a great radio station. Um, I would argue that Arrow's the best going, but, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's uh, it's just my opinion. But, yeah, she's a pretty good thing. All right, that's me for another week. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. And um, I will at some stage get back to my, my stories of my adventures around the world. I know people like them and... Every now and then someone listens to them and thinks, oh my God, I'm in that story. Uh, because they are true stories about real people. Um, there is some degree of poetic licence, but not a hell of a lot. Most of them are pretty real. And, you know, I've been very privileged to live a great life. I, I'm poor as a result, but I'd rather be poor than happy than rich and sad. So that's my final thought for you. And I hope you have a good week, look after each other, and um, I'll see you again next Friday. Ciao for now. Cheers.